it's commonplace to have a slider control in a graphical user interface in which the user can choose a value on a number line between a minimum and a maximum value. And it might appear at first that Visual Basic and WinForms does not have a slider control. And that's for two reasons. One, they don't call it a slider, they call it a track bar. And secondly, the toolbox is kind of buried and only found in the All Windows Forms section. So if you look at the common controls, you won't see it or any of the other subheadings in the toolbox. You've got to look in the All Windows Forms. And then you can drag the track bar over. So some of the key properties for the track bar are the back color. You can see on the very last one here on the right hand side, I changed the color to an, a dark olive. The minimum and maximum represent the range of numbers that we can choose from. And these are integers, so the track bar only does integers. And there's no, there's no setting for the increments. It always does increments of one. The orientation, we can do horizontal or we can do vertical. The right to left allows us to switch the numbers. So the, the minimum number is on the right hand side and the maximum number is on the left. And you'll see that in the bottom horizontal one where I go from zero to 100, but zero is on the right and 100 is on the left. The tick frequency is how often do you wanna see those ticks? The default is one, but maybe you only wanna see the ticks every five, which is the example I have down here again at the bottom on the left. The value is the setting of the track bar where that little thumbtack is on the track. The small change and large change represent the movement of that thumbtack as far as the value setting using the keyboard. So small change represents what's the incremental change using the left and right arrow keys, whereas the large change, what's the incremental value using the page up and page down keys. Now the track bar by default doesn't show any values and so you don't usually wanna have a label or a text box or some other textual container showing what that value is. So here I have a label to the right of the track, track bar. And as I move this increment, you'll see that the label reflects the change. Now I used a value changed event for the track bar and I coded it so that LBL track a value, that's my little label over here, dot text equals track a dot value and I'm converting that to a string. Very straightforward. The second example here horizontally is the same thing, but there's no way to add the values of the ticks within the properties. So I here created three different labels, one for zero, one for five, which is the halfway mark, and one for 10. Those are simply labels on top of the track bar. On this third one, I want to be able to select values from a minus one to a positive one, but in increments of one tenth. Now the track bar only supports integers. So here's my trick. I set the minimum at minus 10 and the maximum at positive 10, and the value at zero. But programmatically, we could divide the value of the track bar by 10 and convert that to a string and show that in our label. So here, while it says I'm at minus one over on the left-hand side, it really is a minus 10 value on the track bar. And same with a positive one, it's really a positive 10 on the track bar. But this allows me to get incremental values in tenths between a minus one and a positive one. On this last example, we're going from zero to 100. Again, I've set the right to left to yes, but I've set this up to only use increments of five. Now, I said the track bar doesn't have an incremental value, but once again, we can do this with code. In this case, we've got values between zero and 100. I can take that and do an integer division of five to round that to a value between zero and 20 and multiply that by five. And that will give me increments of five. I also set the small change to five, so if I press the left arrow key, I'll move up here to 30, 35. But if I do a page up, it moves 20 units at a time. And same with page down. On the right hand side, I have two track bars that are vertical in their orientation. One on the left goes from, from one to 25. The one on the right, I set the right to left layout to true so that the tick marks are on the left hand side rather than the right hand side. This one goes from one to 100. Now it brings up a design point here in that if you're gonna have a large range, make sure that your track bar has enough width or height 
to be able to handle all the different pixels for the different increments. In other words, if you have a trackbar that is 50 pixels high and we go from 0 to 100, it's not going to be able to hit all those different ticks. So that's the trackbar, or we might refer to as the slider. In our next practicum project, we'll set up sliders for red, green, and blue values of colors where each one goes from 0 to 255. And we can thus create any one of 16.7 million different combinations with the 8-bit values of each of those sliders from 0 to 255. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the Programming Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.